Hello Internet, my name is Rachel and I go by Rachel Ray here on the tubes and today I have another really exciting episode of a catch-up. Uh, miss, <laughs> miss, I can't even, I don't have words. It's been seven weeks. It's been seven weeks and I'm out of practice. Welcome to my mid-year WIP parade. WIP stands for work in progress and I will be showcasing cross stitch and knitting in this video, but not a lot of knitting. I, I just have a really big announcement that I'd like to share up front with anybody that's interested. But before we get into that, let me just cover the bases here. If you're new, welcome. If you just subscribed, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you all so much for helping me reach a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I really appreciate it. And I did have a giveaway in my last video and I'd like to go ahead and announce the winners straight up right at the front. Um, if I can find, yeah, I'll find my piece of paper. I am a little organized, but not... There are many more organized people here on Floss Tube than me, uh, so if if this is not your thing, I I understand. It's a little chaos, but it it's fine. Just grab a drink, right? Get some water. We'll get into it. So let's talk about those prizes, shall we? Um, I had four charts. One was a set that was up for grabs. Um, because I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who, where did I put them? <laughs> oh, there they are. To everybody who had been watching and helped me to grow the channel to a thousand subscribers because I separated, I separated these specific types of videos from my main channel, which is Rachel Ray Craft. You could check it out. I'll have it linked up in the eye. Um, I needed, I, I just wanted to separate things because diamond painting and cross stitch, it just started to get, the the schedule started to get a bit overwhelming for me, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> First up is Nikki's Creations Lady Sewing Roll. Nine people commented with the word lady, and the winner is Mama Hodge Cra Crochet and Crafts. Congratulations, Mama Hodge. I will have this in the mail soon. And I actually, funny enough, and this is not rigged, I promise, um, Mama Hodge actually sent me a care package, and uh, I am so thankful. So I'll show you what she sent me here in just a few minutes. But um, next up, for the giveaway is the totally tropical card kit there were 10 people who used the word tropical in their comment and crafty tabby cat you are the winner of this card kit so congratulations next up we have <clears throat> egypt uh this is an unnamed uh kit from Perman of copenhagen and there were 13 comments that wanted the little um, Egypt piece. And the winner is Vixie Foxhaven. Thank you so much for commenting. All of you, thank you so much. And congratulations. D definitely check your email if I'm saying your name because I have sent you an email. You might need to check your spam folder and send me your email, your shipping address. And lastly, <clears throat> drink. This is the five o'clock somewhere, or five o'clock, I should say, uh, ink circles pattern that is so cute. This came in a box from the Black Needle Society. Um, it comes with a needle minder and the pins if you want to make a pillow or something like that. And 32 people use the word drink in their comment. And Denise Bentley, congratulations, longtime viewer and subscriber of my channels. Thank you so much, Denise. Congratulations. I hope that you'll enjoy this and stitch it with love. And those are our giveaways from the last episode. Again, thank you all so much for watching and supporting my endeavors here on YouTube. I know that um, I, I try to make this an open and inviting space, and I hope that you feel that you are you are what makes this uh, fun and exciting for me because if it wasn't then I'd just be yeah I don't want to think about that anyway hi um so 
for the last seven weeks, I have been, uh, eight weeks, I've been actually really sick. <clears throat> so I haven't been able to make a real update and I didn't have the energy or the spoons to make any kind of like real push in uh, any of my channels or social media or anything. I just needed some downtime because I've been dealing with some bronchitis issues. And um, anyway, I got I got a really lovely care package from Mama Hodge. She, she crocheted me this beautiful hat, which I'm not going to put on camera because I look really silly in hats, but it is really cute and it will keep me super warm. So thank you so much. Uh, she does have a channel, by the way, and it wasn't to plug her channel, but if you look up Mama Hodge, H-O-D-G-E, Mama Hodge Crochet and Crafts, you'll see her channel here, here on YouTube. She also sent me a bunch of um, stitch markers, which I don't have all of them here in front of me, but I do have a couple of them, and they were so beautiful and just such a lovely gift. Um, I opened it many weeks ago, but I really appreciate it. And um, thank you so much. Uh, I honestly, due to everything that happened after the, the panini, um, it's really difficult for people to send things to me anymore. Um, please don't ever feel like you need to send anything because that's it's actually really difficult to receive mail now that I have to pay like loads of fees and stuff. Um, if you ever want to send me a card though, uh, just send me a message and I'll send you my, my PO box. But um, please no packages because I just, with the way the world is now, I'm too broke for that. <laughs> but I do appreciate you. Thank you so much. <laughs> she did ask my permission. Anyway, shall we get into it? Um, there were a couple more announcements that I wanted to make. Today's video is all thanks to my patrons. Uh, I have a Patreon where I do like behind the scenes vlog style videos. And um, if you want to just help support me a little bit, help me pay my bills because this is my full time job. Um, I'm, tr I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. But anyway, they are the ones that told me they voted on the poll uh, yesterday that uh, they wanted to see an entire like whip parade. And uh, I was just going to do a regular update. And I know I'm like a month late for the whip parades, but hopefully you've gotten through your watch later list here on on YouTube and you've watched and exhausted all the other whip parades. And now you're excited for another one. I hope. <laughs> So we're just going to do it in August. Who cares, right? Um, but before I get into the cross stitch, I wanted to share with you my knitting. I'm not going to share all of my knitting with you today because I am not a voracious knitter and this channel is mainly cross stitch. However, at the moment, however, I am doing something uh, and this started on Twitch. I am streaming on Twitch as well on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you like live streams, you should come over and hang out with us. I am there from like 9 a.m. Eastern time, which is 1 p.m. Irish time. I live in Ireland. And um, so I get on for like four hours uh, twice a week and we just hang out and chill and you share your projects with me and tell me about what's going on in your life and your crafty business. And we talk all kinds of stuff. Well, a couple of weeks ago, it came up that uh, it just, it happened in conversation and I ran with it, the Summer Sorrel Escal. And we just did that because of alliteration, uh, the, the hashtag Escal. Uh, it kind of stands for like start along, knit along, because I'm not expecting anyone to finish anything within a very short period of time. But um, the Summer Sorrel sweater or Summer Sorrel tee is by a designer called Wool and Pine. And I was thinking, you know, let's knit this tee together, right? Um, my summer here in Southwest Kerry, Ireland has been nothing but wet, rainy and cold. Uh, the average temperature is about 62 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees 
Celsius and um, absolutely miserable. So I wanted to do some knitting because usually I only knit in the winter because it's usually humid and, and kind of gross, right? Um, so join me, please join me. We are gonna knit the sweater t-shirt. If you want to do the sweater, you can do the sweater, but because it's almost the end of summer, but um, we're going to knit this together using the hashtag summer sorrel escal, which I will put on the screen. I have a uh, post about it on my Instagram, and it's only going to be held on Instagram because managing all of the different social medias can be a little overwhelming for me. So I hope you understand that. Um, I've already started and I've gotten pretty far. Now, <clears throat> I'm not 100% done with the yoke yet, but I'm very close and I'd like to share it with you. I'm gonna show you the back of the sweater, if I can. <laughs> Warning, there is a lot of dog hair because my dog, Luna, she likes to shed. So this is the top, the yoke of the summer sorrel tee. And I have thread and everything else on it. But here we go. The colorway that I'm using is from the Dyer Curio Stitches, who is in the UK. And this is the colorway Yennefer on a four, four ply high twist, 100% merino, I believe. Hopefully those colors are coming out. I, I have noticed that the quality of these um, videos is not as I would like them to be, and I am planning on upgrading, by the way. But um, yes, this is beautiful. It's, it's black, gray, teal, and purple. My favorite. So <clears throat> I am really close to the end of the yoke. I've tried it on. It's gorgeous. It's got the summer sorrels tee has a boat neck and I didn't want it to be so big so I did make some modifications but it is looking really good and once this is the, the second chart is finished I'm going to take it off and I was I, I don't know if you remember I unboxed the Ramadan box here on my channel and um, this was in it and I totally forgot about it. But this is like a rubberized cable that you can use to, um, to put stitches on hold. So I plan on putting the sweater on those, blocking the yoke, making sure that it's good, and then moving on because there's a lot of stitches in there and it's quite big. It is quite big, but my, my cables don't go that far. That's why they're kind of bunched up. So yeah, it's so pretty though. I love the detail of the kind of pine needle look and it honestly looks a lot harder to do than it is. The hardest part for me, and I did, I did, not share this because I was sick and uh, taking time off while I was starting this. Really the hardest bit was here in the back where we did the short rows and trying to calculate where I wanted my neckline to go. Once that was all done, because I'm not like a big knitter, um, I'm still very new at knitting. Um, once that got on the way, we were off and, and doing it. So please join me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this kind of um, knit along together with me open until the 1st of December. And on the 1st of December or that floss tube, that next floss tube that comes out after the 1st or on the 1st, um, I'm going to pick someone who has shared their project and their progress with us on Instagram using that hashtag. So please use the hashtag on your photo so that I can see it and I can enter you in for the drawing and you're going to win a pattern from Ravelry or from any designer's website if you don't use Ravelry. Um, 
if you would like another woolen pine design, that would be amazing. But this is not sponsored by anyone. So it's not sponsored by Instagram or anyone. It's just me. I just want to knit along with you and share our progress together and feel like we're doing something together. I know it's an oddly specific um, knit along, but uh, yeah, I, I think it would be kind of fun to share. And if you're curious, the bag that I'm using to hold everything in is a Kaylee cross stitch bag. You can find her on the sewingshop.ca. She's in Canada. And I love her bags. They're huge. And they're beautiful. And you know me and Japan. I have a huge love for everything Asian, Korean, Cambodian, Thailand, everywhere. Um, but especially Japan has my heart. And this beautiful picture of cranes and irises and chrysanthemums is just so beautiful. Um, I love it. And I love the inside fabric as well. So that's my knitting update. Um, <clears throat> also, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to my new friend Wild Knitting, Wild Cottage Knitting, sorry. I'll go ahead and um, put their details down below. I have been following her channel for quite some time. And I went ahead and, you know, I'm trying to get into knitting and trying to get uh, really like excited about learning new skills in knitting as well. And she opened up this, this make along, uh, with a friend of hers and it's going to be the Mary Minnie Mal. I'll put the details down below, but we, I'm going to join in <clears throat> on this knit along as well. So I'll be doing my own and I'll be joining in on hers too. Uh, the Merry Minnie Mal. And I have something in mind. I'm going to be doing the Adventuresome Wrap. I've talked about it a lot. And I'm going to show you the colors and everything that I'm going to be using for this project. And I believe that it ends in the middle of January if I'm not mistaken. So you can cast on now if you want to join in. There's a Ravelry group and everything full of people who are sharing their projects. I will not be casting on right away, but I will be casting on as soon as I can. I just want to make sure that I get at least to the body <laughs> of my sweater before I cast on another project. Are you ready? So um, in here I have all of the yarns. This is a bag that my grandma got for me before she passed away um, from, what is the name of that shop? It's in Ashland, Virginia. Center of the Yarniverse is the local LNS there. And um, I, I have been wanting to kit up this project for ages using the advent that I got from Addison at Ruby and Rose's Yarn. This is from 2021. She's especially talented with yarn dyeing. I believe she's based in the US. And these are the colors. Oh my god. I love them so much. There we go. This is the order that I will be using them in as well. And in between each color, in between each color, I will be using black. This is a pure black merino 7525 merino nylon by Mothy and the Squid in the color Midnight. I've used it before in another project, and I just went ahead and bought another skein. And I have leftover from the last project that I'll use as well. But these colors are phenomenal, so beautiful, and I can't wait to have another rainbow inspired wrap or shawl because they are pretty and they bring a smile to people's faces. I live in a very touristy place of the world and um, there's a lot of like artists and fun eccentric people that live here. Um, and I think that I can kind of I, I don't want to use the word get away with, but I can wear like really eccentric kind of styles and stuff and people don't bat an eye. You wear what you want when you want, right? But anyway, <clears throat> that is, that is going to be my Mary Minnie Mal project and the yarn that I'm using for it. And I'm so excited. <laughs> so 
Is that everything knitting? I do believe so. Let's go ahead and get into the cross stitch. This is going to take some time and I may have to do this, film this video in two parts because we're going to dinner tonight. Uh, and also it is pouring rain outside, so I don't know how good this is all going to come up on camera, but fingers crossed. We'll just keep going. Um, thank you for your patience. Let's see. Oh, and I know this is going to be a very long video. At the end of the video, I have a big surprise for you. I didn't want to overload you with all of the things that are going on, all of the um, SALs and, and which stands SAL, S-A-L is stitch along, M-A-L is mal, make along, um, cal, knit along. Um, sorry for all. If you have a question, please leave a comment. I will answer your question if you're confused at all by my shortening of words. Um, but I'm trying to be as quick as I can. But I have other things that I really want to share with you. And I have a really special thing that I would like to share with you at the end. So please make sure that you watch this video. If you have to watch it in parts, I totally understand. So let's get started. We're going to go in order, or at least we're going to go in order as much as I can. There's a couple of projects that I will show at the end where I don't have a start date and I have no idea. I just, <laughs> I have no idea. So are you ready? Some of these projects I have not touched, but it's nice to look at them again. Okay, let's start with the very first one that I don't have a date for. This is a, a long anticipated like look at this project as well. This is a rainbow bead embroidery kit that I got from All About Embroidery UA. They are a Ukrainian store on Amazon. And if you look them up, all about embroidery UA. U, U letter UA. Um, I may not be able to link everything, but I have not touched this in a very long time. It is really difficult to read this particular pattern. I feel like I might have understand. I might have it now, but I don't a hundred percent know. Um, I have started lines and I'm ready. I'm prepared to continue working on this, but I just haven't given it enough dedicated time. It is large. Um, it's called Rainbow Fractal and it came in a little box with a bunch of beads like so. This is not a cheap kit. I just recently got a comment from someone asking me um, <clears throat> how much I paid. I think it cost me 75 euros um, for this kit. Beaded embroidery is not cheap and no, the company did not send it to me. I bought it when the Ukraine war broke out and I wanted to support a Ukrainian company. And I love bead embroidery, but I just lost steam on it. So I just wanted to bring that out to show you. I'm using my Elon lock scroll frames for this by Artisan Designs. I would absolutely love to finish this finish this project so I can use this scroll frame for one of my fancy ladies or something because honestly it's just it's lived on this frame for so long I should probably just take it off in fairness but that is the update on that particular project. I know that a lot of you wanted to see it and see where it is. It hasn't moved. I, I need to get back to it someday. But the best thing about these kits is that they do not go bad. They can sit in the closet for long periods of time. <laughs> Next up is my oldest cross stitching whip. This is Galaxy Unicorn. Uh, the designer is no longer on Etsy, but it was Cat's Coffee and Crafts. I used an 18 count Ada called Galaxy by Mystic Fabrics. 
and this is two strands of floss over one fabric thread and I did grid the entire project but unfortunately that did not actually help in the long run <laughs> that's a whole other story um, and that's part of the reason why it's been in my whip pile for so long is because the grid is wrong or I, I became wrong and I stitched it wrong um, <clears throat> this project taught me that I do not like two strands on 18 count so I have decided to never do that again and I am keeping it in a Books Art Liberty sleeve, which I got that is um, Bridgerton themed, because I'm a sap. I'm a hopeless romantic, I guess. Uh, and I'm also using a bendy flip that is galaxy themed to hold my flosses. Uh, you can find this on Etsy, bags, bag, B-A-G, Z. Z plus P L U S is the name of the shop and they do these little cute little um, floss bobbin holder thingies and they're super cute but I don't like bobbins as much anymore so I haven't really um, been buying them since but I totally recommend them for people who love using floss bobbins Next up, my second oldest whip. I can't believe that this is still a whip. We're getting through them though. I am getting through them. Um, oh, sorry, Galaxy Unicorn was started January 17th, 2020. It is August 18th, 2023. <laughs> anyway, who cares? Next up is the Grimm's Fairy Tales Stitch Along by Clouds Factory. This is their 2020 sal. This is on 16 count olive oil by Barbaral Creations on Etsy. Also two over one. Using all the called for flosses. It's beautiful. It's really gorgeous. The only reason that I haven't really picked this up is because I realized that I don't like changing colors that often. And so it really is a labor of love. I have made a couple of changes to this as well. Um, I made the, um, the person riding the horse um, like non-binary and also change their skin color. And I changed this into a unicorn. Um, and I think... <laughs> I don't know if the back stitching on on this little creepy witch's face is actually accurate, but anyway, I like it. I like it. It's funky. And uh, because this is one of my oldest pieces, I do have a couple of mistakes on here as well, but it is what it is, and it's super cute, and I love the fabric. Isn't it pretty? So that is that one. Um, I am... Also, for all of my projects, I have these project trackers that come from S. Ward Designs. Very hel helpful. They show you how often you stitch on stuff as long as you keep up with it, which I don't always. Um, so it says here that I started on March 18th, 2020. Wow, that was a while ago. And I'm keeping it in a Love You More bag. This is the company that... Black Needle Society also runs for project bags and it's a feather one. So I love I love the idea of the the book sleeve as a project bag. They work very well. Next up is one of my biggest pieces. <clears throat> oh that's all crumpled up which is a heaven and earth design full coverage piece not touch this in a little while this is my piece soul of the rose by john water john uh what's his name waterhouse Sorry, I'm blinking. 
Uh, and it's on 25 count easy grid. This chart was a gift from a subscriber named Michael, and I use the hashtag what's another BAP. I've also used this several years in a row for the marathon for MMIW um, 100 hours challenge where we raise money for murdered and missing indigenous women in North America. Um, I just as a, a quick aside, I do not think that we will be doing that this year. Um, several of us do not have the ability to do to to give the time for that this year, but uh, we may be doing it at a later date, just not in September. So that's what it looks like. It's not too bad, not too shabby. Um, I believe I'm at, ooh, if I, if I can look it up, I'll put it on the screen at the percentage that I'm at right now on this project. If you are looking at those dangly things, those are called bobbies. Bobbies are available on Amazon and they make great little hangers for your parked threads. And if you are curious about how I park my threads on this project, I do have a video on how I park threads. They are, they are not, it's not difficult. And in fact, it helps me a lot to park. Um, it saves a lot of time. So that is symbol of the rose. What's next? Ooh, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. This one, oops. I had finishes. We'll do finishes at the end, it's fine. <clears throat> this is not a standard floss tube, is it? All right. Next is a project that I pulled out for 24 hours of cross stitch. If you've already seen the video, then you've seen this and it's progress so far. However, I love this project. This is, oh, sorry. Soul the Rose was started on March the 24th of 2020. This one was started May the 7th, 2020 for at the time, I wanted to participate in a group effort called Stitch Mania. It's something that Floss Troopers have done. I stopped participating in that hashtag because of the name, but I started doing something called Maestravaganza, which is basically exactly the same thing. I try to do, I try to touch all of my whips during the month of May. But anyway, this is the Chinese Zodiac Sal by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery on 28 count heirloom by Pole Stitches. It's a beautiful kind of creamy pink color. Um, this was their 2020 Sal and it is just so cute. I managed to almost complete an entire quadrant, um, except for I didn't bring down the red far enough, but I did work on this for many, many hours during the 24 hours of cross stitch or 24 HOCS Hawks weekend. And it was really, really fun to do. I, I enjoyed it, but I did after probably, I think it was eight or nine hours solid of working on this. I got sick of the colors, so I wanted to change my project, but that was really good progress. Um, if I have before pictures, I will have put them on the screen beforehand. Hello, baby. Hi, my lovely. Luna wants to say hello to everybody. And this project is being kept in this beautiful pink paisley so much to love bag. Isn't that adorable? So much to love on Etsy, I believe. Oh, it's gone all weird. There we go. This is actually a gift. Uh, well, I won it in an auction from Michelle Bendy Stitchy. And I think it's the cutest little bag. It's adorable. Next up is one that I just recently started, uh, worked on, like really, really recently. Yesterday. <laughs> um, this is 
Miss Cherry Blossom by Mirabilia. And I do have a lot actually done on her, but I do not want to take it off the cue stack because I'm not finished. I am not finished working on this project right now. I want to keep working on the umbrella, her parasol. Um, before I started stitching on this, I did not have the parasol at all, but the stitching does go down. I'll show you, I'll, sh I'll show you that much at least. If I can. Let go, please. There we go. I know it's not perfect, but the stitching does go down quite a bit here. She's going to be beautiful. I love her so much. And every time I pick her up, I'm like, why am I not working on her more? This was a gift from my friend Linda at Linda's 144 Hobbies here on YouTube. Love her channel. Um, she gifted me the chart and the beads, and I got this gorgeous, gorgeous fabric from Heart Stitch Designs on Etsy. They are in Italy, and this is a 32 count, though it feels like a 28. Like, these are very large stitches to me. Um, and it, is, it was started May 8th, 2020. But yes, in order to get her done, I'm going to have to stitch her more, uh, which means that I need to keep it out and keep working on it. Um, and I keep her in a Love You More bag as well. This is like a, a wave, Japanese wave. Gorgeous. Stunning. I love that project so much. Um, <clears throat> next up. I have not shown or touched this one in a long time, but I did actually get an update for this. So I'm not going to pull it all out, but I will show you here. This is Grazing Sheep by Doreen Jones. Does that, does that work? It's kind of hard to see the colors there. This was started on May the 9th, 2020. <laughs> All these new starts in 2020. I got very excited. Um, this is a baby blue custom dye by uh, XJU Designs in 28 Count Lugana. It's nice and, and slick. I like it a lot. Um, it's, it's very difficult. <laughs> Uh, for me, um, because there's a lot of back stitch and quarter stitches and stuff like that. And, you know, it just, when I was starting this, I was just dipping my toe into the water of all of that. When I first started this, it was a magazine only pattern. So it was very difficult to like read between the lines and like know what you're highlighting because there's everything everywhere. But since then, Doreen has, or Durian, sorry if I mispronounce names, I do apologize, I really do, um, has, she's come out with a, uh, a PDF version, and so I am ready. I have it, I own it, I can start it up again. Um, I am keeping this, and I just hide the chart. <laughs> This is a Cal's Crafts bag. Cal's Crafts is on YouTube and uh, TikTok, and it's so cute. I saw it and I immediately knew with the sheep on it, I needed to have that for this particular project. And I'm also using another kind of bendy flip. This is much, much bigger. It holds five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five by nine. So that, what is that? Maths. 45, <laughs> 45 bobbin. Uh, it's not called a flip. It's called something else, but I love this gorgeous fabric. <clears throat> kind of overkill um, for, for a project that I haven't touched since 2020 but that is the way I roll sometimes 
So that is a whip, technically. And it'll stay on the shelf until I'm ready <laughs> to get back to it. Next up. This one. This one's another one that's kind of shelved a little bit. Bothy Threads Bellflower. It's a William Morris. Yeah, William Morris, like, tapestry design. I love it. It's beautiful. The colors are gorgeous. Uh, this is on a 14-count uh, Ada. And it is beautiful. I just don't, I don't feel the pull to it all that often. Mainly because it's a huge paper chart. Like, this chart is, like, it's... Uh, I don't even know what, what's a, an A2 or something piece of paper. It's huge. So <clears throat> I have not worked on it very much. Um, just here and there during my Maestravaganza uh, stitching weekends or uh, times that I'm on Twitch. Ooh, I love this one. Are you ready for this one? I haven't seen this one in a while. By the way, these these plastic bags here are from the stationery store. I got them. Um, I got them in bulk, and they do make excellent project bags on a budget. So, if you are concerned about spending a lot of money on um, on bags you don't have to uh, to keep them protected you absolutely do not have to do that and just get the stationery bags so this this project here which is going to get blown out by the camera is the northern expression needlework twisted rainbow sampler sampler with specialty stitches and it's beautiful and it's got dinky dyes I bought the silk pack from my friend Jesse at misladepages.com Jesse has a floss pack for this chart and lots of other charts uh, a dinky dye conversion and they are like butter this is stitched on a 28 count black Lugana by Zweigart <laughs> and it says here I'm using the hashtag don't get it twisted Sal <laughs> Um, I love this piece. It's gorgeous. And when I do take it out, I love it. However, the reason you haven't seen it this year is, um, because I decided to focus more pointedly at projects that are closer to a finish and, or uh, if I just really wanted to to zone in on a particular person, um, I worked on that instead. But here's all the colors. Oh my god, they're so pretty. So pretty. I started that on May 16th, and Bellflower was May 15th, 2020. So all of these are 2020 whips, and they will get worked on. They will. In time. In due time. <clears throat> And that's why they're in the plastic bags as well, because I had all of these new starts, loads of new starts. All right, whip number nine. We're in number nine. Ten, technically, if you count the beaded embroidery. This is Sheep Heap by Plum Street Samplers. So cute. Love it. I did Fox View already. And uh, Fox View was also in that, you know, start all the new things craze. Um, I've only worked on this for one, two days, and uh, it's it doesn't have much at all to it. Um, it is stitched with the called for colors on 32 count Oaken by Picture This Plus. We didn't realize how rare these color these fabrics were gonna be but i'm on the middle sheep just smack dab in the middle of the design
It's okay. It's okay. It's a bit plump, which is interesting to me because it shouldn't be, but it feels that way. Anyway, yes, Sheep Heap, May 24th, 2020. And all the call for, call for colors on a floss ring here. That, I think, this and Foxview was were the projects where I discovered the amazingness of floss rings and how much I love having my floss on rings. Next up is Trick or Treat. I want to show off the bag real quick. This is a one-of-a-kind bag. Um, unfortunately, the company that... I really like this company. They're in Ireland. It's called My Cottage Number no. 9. And they make knitting bags. Very pretty ones. So if you're in the EU, definitely go check them out on Etsy. Uh, they wanted to try them out because I showed interest, but they said the vinyl front bags are not their thing, which I totally respect and understand. This is Trick or Treat by The Drawn Thread. The I have a Pure Weeks conversion, um, which I got before the whole weeks thing. I don't buy weeks anymore. Um, and if you need to know why, I mean, Google it. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> I started this October the 1st, 2020. My October new start. You see there's a big jump there. We went from May to October, so... This is it. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So it's gonna say trick or treat. And this is on 32 count Belfast. And I'm stitching this one over two to give it that like kind of prim, a bit of a primitive look. Like I want it, I want it to look thin, you know? I want it to look older than it is. So I've decided to do just one strand over two threads on the 32 count and it's going very well uh, i did quite a lot of work on this earlier this year so i'm proud of my progress on this and i think i can definitely get a finish on this this year if i focus on it but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna force myself because i have other plans which I'm excited about. And I'll talk about them when I get to those projects and when I get to plans, plans, because there are lots of plans coming up. The holidays are coming. The, you know, summer is almost over. We gotta get ready, get, re get ready for cross stitch season. Next, oh dear, I haven't touched this in a long time. I'm not ready to give the, up on this one. Baked Alaska by Glenn in Place. Gorgeous. Love the colors. Stunning. Got the Dinky Dye Silk Pack from MisslaidPages.com. And I got my fabric from XJU Designs. It is another custom old blue it says this has barely been started this is kind of one of those things where i i i wonder if i should even share it um but it is a whip it is technically in my stash you can barely see but i've done this like corn cob thing and it is very pretty but it's also very hard to see. So I don't know. One day when I'm feeling geometric, I will pull that out. Um, but there are so many beautiful designers that or designers that make beautiful cross stitch patterns that are geometric. And I'm just not in my geometric phase right now, but I'm not willing to give up on this. And the fabric is so luscious and so soft and gorgeous. Beautiful dinky dice silk. I do not want to get rid of it, but I don't want to stitch on it right now. So 
it stays <clears throat> on the shelf. Next up is a whip that I am going to retire. I'm going to try not to get emotional. In this beautiful Marissa bag, Marissa is the crafty heifer here on YouTube. She runs a bunch of retreats, crafting retreats, and she made this bag for me. Thank you, Marissa. This one and the next, yeah, this one and the next bag are both Marissa bags. This is Apricot Polka Dots Temperature Mandala on a 14 count plain white Ada. And this was started on January 20th, 2021. Uh, about 10, 15 days before my grandfather passed away. And I believe that this corner right here is the day that he passed. Um, I got to a point on this where I didn't want to keep going and I haven't picked it up since. I don't think I have it in me to finish it right now. Um, as I was saying, I was saying in my Twitch stream that I have this piece of paper which I cannot show, I could show you like a corner, show you that I've written all over it, but this is like a, a letter from the VA talking about my granddad and like it's got my grandma's name on it and she's since passed as well. And it's just a very emotional project and I don't want, I don't want to do it right now. It hurts. It hurts to think about it. So I'm going to just put that in a tote with other crafty stuff. I'll, I'll change the bag out and I'll put it away with everything that's needed for that project. And maybe one day I can finish it, but that is not right now. I'm not okay with that right now. So that is being retired from my whip list. Next up though, is another Marissa bag. Isn't it beautiful? I love this fabric so much. And this is the other side. my favorite y'all I gotta show you the whole fabric this is the new normal by long dog samplers uh, I am stitching on 28 count opalescent Lugana that is unnamed by mislaid pages you can now find this color I cannot remember what name they use <clears throat> excuse me but I've shown this piece before and the fabric is just incredible. I started this on my birthday, February 22nd, 2021, while I was helping my grandma after my granddad's passing. This is where I am and it's so pretty. I'm just using regular DMC 310 on this fabric just to make it really pop. I'm using the cone version of the DMC. I did realize the last time I worked on it that uh, down here, the pattern repeated in Pattern Keeper. So I've gone through Pattern Keeper now and deleted the rows or, you know, um, marked them off so that I know not to double up. But that's where I stopped because of that error but I do plan on keeping going because this project is on my WIPGO board and I'll talk about WIPGO at the end just to give you an update. If you don't know, WIPGO is a like bingo game that you play with yourself and it is the, the genius of Jesse Marie does stuff here on YouTube. <clears throat> if you're looking for all of these people that I'm mentioning, by the way, you can find most of them in my whip list uh, with the floss tubers section or link haven sorry it's called the link haven and uh, I try to put all their all their names there but yes that is my beloved long dog the new normal 
which I had to adjust to in that year, my new normal without family. I started this on May the 10th, 2021. This is Ink Circles Small Burbs. Uh, a bunch of us who were in Michelle Bendy Stitchy's Twitch stream decided to start this together. I can't believe that it's been over two years since we started this chart. I grabbed everything from Stash, so it is not called for anything. Um, I'm using my own little conversion here. So I've got Fiberlicious Shooting Stars, Fiberlicious uh, Yummy Fibers, Midnight, Fiberlicious Dusk, uh, and Forbidden Fiber Crows, Forbidden Fiber Crows Scarecrow, which is the heavily variegated one. The rest are like blues and purples and cream. And I am stitching this on Fortnite Fabrics, The Greens which had just come out and I won this piece from them. And I made it really, really, really small. So, let's see if I can drape it on here. This is one over one on 28 count, which is extremely small. That is stitching on 50 count, basically. Or is it 28? 46, 56, sorry, 56 count. It's like one over two on 56 count. So very small for me, my smallest stitching project. It's very hard for me to see with my naked eye. So um, I need magnifiers to work on this, but it is really cute. And it's pretty, and I love the colors. And I love this fabric. I love Fortnite fabrics. They're so nice. Definitely check them out. They're based in North Carolina. I'd love to meet them someday. They're a hoot. I used to go and watch their live streams and have a gas time. Started that on, yeah, May the 10th, 2021. So that was three months without a whip in that period. <clears throat> and I'm using, uh, this is a bag that I got from the Black Needle Society, one of their boxes. I think it was like a writer's box. Just squeeze it in. <laughs> All right, next up. Some water. Is in a patchwork paw print bag. They are based, they're on Etsy, patchwork paw print. I think they're a UK store. And um, they were one of the first bag designers that I really, like I was just like obsessed with. Um, their, their stuff is so pretty. I got this stuff like well before this point. This, this has been used for several projects now. Um, so this piece is called Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow, which looks like this. I'm sure you've seen it before, but it is a panel kind of almost full coverage piece by Carriage House Samplings. And I'm stitching this on a 25 count Lugana, which is, I'm surprised at how beautiful this Lugana is. Uh, this is by Be Stitch Me. Look at the color. Look at that color. Oh my God. So <clears throat> I had this piece of fabric in my stash and I did not know what I was going to use it for. It was like 25 count Lugana. Like why would I, why would I buy that? But I think that it was actually in a box or something. S'mores. Look at this. Okay. I'm just going to move my, I know there's strands, parked threads here, but bear with me. That is where I'm at. <clears throat> and that is one over one. Right? Yeah. One over one stitching. So. Uh, 
my webcam does not want to show you just how beautiful and intricate it is, but trust me, it's it's just about the same size as the picture. It's only a little bit bigger than the picture. Uh, so what is this? 20, what did I say? 25 count. So that is 50 count. One over two. The, the equivalent. So it's also a very small chart. Now, I have plans for this one. I'm going to tell you about it right now because I might forget. Um, I am planning on stitching this alongside my friend Heike, Stone Cold Coffee Crafts, one of my best friends, and uh, we're going to stitch this together during the spooky season, uh, on and off with another stitch along. So we'll have a personal stitch along. You're welcome to join us. I don't have a hashtag yet, uh, but Halloween at Hawk Run Hello or Halloween at HRH23. We'll do that. I'll put it down below. And uh, we'll see if we, how far we can get with this one. It'll be nice to do this together with someone because the colors are very muted. But again, it's it's so beautiful and it's going to be so fun. All right, so that's where I'm going to leave the recording for right now and I will come back to you later on to give you the tea on the rest of the Oops. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. It is the next morning. Um, had a great night last night. Great dinner and everything. And my dog Luna says hello. This is Luna. She's my collie. She's my little tripod. She only has three legs. She's saying, don't embarrass her on the internet. You good? You can see her in the picture above my head. The diamond painting. Yeah. You're a good girl. Do you want to be a part of this episode? We are on number 16, if you don't count the beaded in. Well, no, now 16, because we've gotten rid of a whip, right? <laughs> All right. I just pulled this one out uh, and worked on it just randomly the other day. This is called Hilda's Brew by Bendy Stitchy Designs. And it is so cute. I am going to uh, kind of consolidate this pattern a little bit to make it a little bit smaller, to make it a little more manageable, because I'm going to put it into my journal, which is a, right here. That's my cross stitch journal where I like to put small things, small pieces. Um, with this piece in particular, I've actually substituted some colors um, I've kind of dug through my stash. I did some of the called fors. I was going to do the border in this beautiful autumn color, um, by Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. Uh, Autumn Wreath is what it's called, but, um, I've decided not to just cause I don't, I, I don't think I'll use it for another bendy design, but, um, I'm using Mrs. Satis Silk in the colorway Mojito for the kind of plumes of noxious gas, which I love. I love that little detail. I started this on August the 5th, 2021. And I think I've worked on it like three times. It's on 28 Count Lugana by Crafty Kitten, who is no longer in business. <clears throat> I used to have this... Um, you know how there's a lot of dyers out there that do these uh, clubs and I got the Smalls Club. So I have a lot of little ornament sized pieces of fabric from Crafty Kitten. So you're going to continue to see those 
even though her fabric is no longer available. Next up is a fun one. Getting closer to a finish. I do need to dedicate some time to this piece. I say that every time that I pick it out. I need to dedicate time to all of my webs. Um, this is the Witchy Stitcher Creepy Cryptid Stitch Along. Oh, there's a needle and everything. Uh, my, my backing board is not big enough for the whole piece, but I'll hold it up like this. Sorry for the crinkles. Cryptid Stitch Along. Isn't it cool? So, if you don't know about my main channel, you may or may not know that I have done a series about cryptids with my husband. It's called The Weird and Wacky with Mr. Ray. And I invite you to, to have a look. I'll make sure to put a link up in the eye if you're interested in some funny, wacky stories. They're fun to listen to while you're crafting. Um, so this piece actually inspired that series um, for us to, to do kind of like a podcast sort of thing. And anyway, Witchy Stitcher came out with this. Now, the Witchy Stitcher is going through some hard times right now, so I encourage you, please go check out her store. Um, we're doing a stitch for Witchy Stitcher, which is um, hashtag Witchy for Stitchy. And um, just to support her and to buy her patterns because she did find out that she has cancer and we want to make sure that she is supported uh, through this very difficult time. Um, this is going to be my piece for that because I want to continue working on this. I actually have two of her projects in on the go, which is not something that I like to do. I like to do one per designer, but sometimes you just got to have a new start, right? <laughs> Anyway, um, Creepy Cryptid Sal started on the 6th of August, 2021. And this is on 16 Count Dreamsicle by Bee Stitch Me. Is this our first Bee Stitch Me fabric? Wow. So Dreamsicle by Bee Stitch Me. It's very bright. And it's such a beautiful piece. I have a couple more cryptids to go, but I am over halfway done, so it's not too far along. I am using another Bags Plus trifold bag here. I'm using it as a bag. Um, I just fold up my fabric and sandwich it in between the bobbins like that. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous purple cherry blossom style fabric with these beautiful butterflies on it and I love it. I love the trifold. I think it's convenient because you can just pack up your whip like this. There's a pocket inside for scissors and everything. Not sponsored. I'm just sharing sharing the information with you all. Let's see. Next up. Okay. This one. I love this whip in a cow bag, Cal's Crafts, and this is one that was on my wish list for a long time, and I managed to buy the pattern. It is Renato Perelin's Christmas, and it's a beautiful Christmas tree. Sorry for my shaky hands. This picture does not do this piece justice. Like it's very orange. Anyway, I started this on December the 1st, 2021 on 32 Count Morel by Fortnite Fabrics. And I've done my own floss conversion. It calls for DMCs. But as you can see, I have two giant floss monsters behind me. Uh, one is cotton, one is silk. Actually, there's three cottons, silks, and then specialty, other specialty cottons. And I wanted to use these ones that I have that I don't purchase anymore. 
on a piece. And I decided that it, I could do some really cool substitutions. So these are Victorian mottos and DMC. And it's so pretty. I love this piece. Now I haven't really touched this since the last time it was on a floss tube at all. Um, but I'm, I am concerned about the back stitch. I may have to go and wait and do the back stitch all at the end. So never mind. Never mind the weird kind of gappiness of these. Anyway, but isn't it gorgeous? I love this fabric too. Um, again, Fortnite is, they're an incredible dyer. Well, team. My needle minder is ACF Creations, by the way. So cute. So cute. It really doesn't want to focus, but it is a wonderful, wonderful piece. And in here I have all the flosses on a ring in floss away bags. Um, like so. I find it's very easy to take care of the flosses if they're in floss away bags, but I'm torn because of the plastic. So I re reuse all of my floss bags um, and I only have them on projects with genuinely like a lot of colors, a lot of color changing. I think they're good for that, but I would recycle them. And you don't have to buy the Floss Away brand bags, but um, you could you could use snack bags as well. They work just as well. But that's them. Ooh, and there's thread jewelry on here. Very pretty little keychain. It's a cross stitch, a needle workshop. <laughs> I wish I had a needle workshop near me. So there is Christmas by Renato Perelin. That was started on the 1st of December, 2021. Now, okay, we've got another big one. This one is in a BNS bag and it's on a Q-snap. How about that? <clears throat> now, the, for this project, I did not do floss away bags. For this one, I cut out my own floss drops. Look at that floss monster. <laughs> Amazing. These are, you know how you can buy DMC knockoff from websites like Amazon? I did that for this project. Probably a mistake. But uh, it did save me a lot of money because this is the Epic Generation 1 Pokemon Cross Stitch by Lord Libidin. And it is huge. The fabric I dyed myself using, do you know that Dylon stuff that you can put in the washing machine? Anyway, this is... This is what I have so far. This is on 18 count Ada, and I'm stitching it one over one. Um, I have not made a big dent in it yet, but it's pretty cool, and I've seen them finished before, and they are amazing. So, yes, I'm sorry if that's not working out. We'll, we'll get there eventually, but yes, that is my Gen 1 Pokemon. Now, <clears throat> with this project, you can see it's like a blanket. <laughs> That's literally how big it's, it's going to be down to there. Um, I am raising money over on Twitch for a charity called Child's Play. They offer games, gaming systems, TVs, things like that to children who are in hospital for um, really serious illness 
cancer, palliative care, you know, end of life care. And this charity gives to those hospitals and those children so that they can take their mind off of what they're going through. And last year I decided to start this so that we could raise money whenever I stitch on it. So I will be stitching on this again over on Twitch. Uh, we are at 44% complete of my goal. My end goal is $5,000 raised. That's a lot of money. So we have raised almost $2,500. Yeah, almost $2,500, about 2,200 or so um, in eight months. That's not so bad. So come and join me if you'd like to donate. I'll have a link down below as well, but feel free to join us um, and we'll get bunny to the kids. And in case you were wondering, that's what my back looks like. I don't share my backs often, um, <clears throat> but on big full coverage pieces like this one, I don't worry about carrying because usually the floss, you know, it'll get tacked down. But that is my Gen 1 Pokemon. I I like to see progress on this piece, but I think that I just have trouble focusing on it myself. Because um, when I go to reach for a full coverage, it's usually something else. But I will work on it again. Things are like seasons, right? With cross stitch, I get in a season and I'm like, ooh, I just want to stitch on small things or ooh, I want to stitch on nothing but massive hades. <laughs> Speaking of another massive project. <clears throat> Most definitely my largest project. <laughs> This is another sewingshop.ca project bag by Kaylee Cross Stitch. My one of my most prized possessions. I love this bag so much. It's a giant vinyl front project bag with my Chatelaine. Chatelaine is a designer who sadly she passed away. I think it was in 2016. And she created these incredible mandalas, if you've never seen them before. Um, I chose the Zen Moss Garden. And this is on 28 count black Jobelin. What does it say? By Zweigart. Um, here we go. Pull that back. I might have to stand up. The lighting is a little poor, so this is about as good as I can get it. But I am here in the middle, uh, at the very middle of the design. These are the four points of the Zen garden with the sand and the rocks. I don't know if you can tell. And in the middle, there's kind of like a fountain, and it's made with the, these um, treasure braids and some DMC. Now, this piece, and I apologize if you can hear anything outside. There's some tractors or something going by. Um, in the end, this piece is going to be massive. Um, I have stalled on this a little bit, in fairness. It is a little hard to see on the on the black, but it's the effect is incredible. And in person with the specialty stitches, it's just it's beautiful. One sad thing about the Chatelaine, because it is on this black fabric, it picks up every speck of dust and dog hair. but it is one of my most prized possessions and I, I love it. I have lots of fun little things for it as well. Uh, I found these on Stitch Anami. These are little alpacas. <laughs> 
that hold my um, really nice fancy flosses. I think those are the water or the Glorianas. Just for fun. Um, what else? We have lots of, yeah, water lily, dinky dyes, all the specialty called fors, um, all of the DMC. It's a rainbow. You can see that. And then, yeah, I've got loads of, down here, lots and lots of treasure braid and silk lame. That was the word I was looking for. Silk lame, which is so soft. It's so soft and pretty. It's really nice to sit down and work on this project. Um, but it does feel like a lot of labor if I'm not, if I'm being honest, it feels like a, a, I have to think about it like it's a full-time job where someone is critiquing me the whole time. Every stitch, I am paranoid that I'm going to stitch it wrong. Um, I am a relatively new stitcher, so um, this is the hardest most complicated piece that I own and I really don't want to mess it up so usually when I work on it I work on this I take it out for like two hours and then I put it back away again but one day I mean in in the future I will have a little nook area where I can have a dedicated I have a dedicated stand that I could use for this project, but I want to make sure that I have a place where I can keep it all out and it's easily accessible and, you know, like it deserves that kind of attention. So yes, this, this will be in my possession for many, many years before it's finished, but it is beautiful and I love it. And my friend Heike Stone Cold is also going to be uh, stitching this someday but on a lighter color fabric. So I look forward to seeing that someday. I started that on February 1st, 2022 uh, as a high tea start, which off the grid needle arts Caroline from Evertotes, she started a uh, high tea. I'm not sure if Caroline's doing high teas anymore, but um, basically where you get your, you know, those those charts, those projects that you have fully kitted up that are very special and maybe maybe more expensive or or just have a really, really big place in your heart that you want to start and you just go ahead and do it, you know, dive right in. And that's what I did on February 1st of last year. All right, next up, we have another trifold from bags plus this one i actually got directly from michelle um i bought it when she was doing the live streams this one is called trans pride tapestry by d's 20 stitches and uncanny kari it is a little wrinkly. <laughs> I'm gonna center it a little bit. But this is the, oh my God, it's so pretty. Let's stand up for this one. There we go. So this is Trans Pride Trapestry by D's 20 Stitches on 28 Count Rick and Lucy by Fortnite Fabrics. <sighs> I love this piece. The I worked on this during Pride Month and <clears throat> I did all of this blue outline, all of the all of the teal, and I filled in these spaces there's so much stitching in here so the cool thing about this project is that sorry the cool thing about this project is that I am doing a conversion this is 
I think, yeah, it is actually uh, uh, called for as DMC, but Ymir from Almond m and studio created a beautiful floss silk pack. Silk floss pack? <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. So there's these gorgeous silks from Ymir, and I went ahead and I purchased those because I wanted, I wanted like a really fun stitching experience. Uh, and silks are expensive, but silks feel really good when you're stitching with them, especially when they're doubled up. For me, so it helps them like glide through the fabric and it feels like you're stitching faster or something it's it's a really nice experience there's a very subtle variegation but i like that because for this particular piece you don't really want a lot and then i decided that i wanted to make my unicorn personalized to me and so i decided to make it fluffy by adding Whisper Floss, this one, which is a really fuzzy, can you see it? How fuzzy it is? Really fuzzy floss. So what I do is I do one half stitch in just regular 3865 um, winter white, and then I go over it with a strand of Whisper and um, it makes it really fuzzy so I like that I like that a lot I love the fabric I love everything about this piece it is so gorgeous and I'm glad that I started with the unicorn because it is a very large chart and the unicorn is completely full coverage um, <clears throat> I highly recommend that you check out these 20 stitches, especially because um, they are going to be doing something really special this December. And I think I think you should check them out on Instagram, please. Next up is a really ugh, like this is just kind of pathetic how small this is. But here's another love you more bag with snakes and really pretty peonies. Peonies are one of my favorite roses or flowers. Um, ooh, I forgot that I had thread jewelry on this too. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is Barbara Anna's Santa, the Dove and the Key, started on August 20th, 2022. And it's on 28 count Muadib by Lappin Loops, which is a fabric dyer from Virginia, where I'm originally from. I'm stitching this two over two, and I'm doing my own conversion. So I did use floss drops that I received in a Black Needle Society box. Oh, oh dear, I better <laughs> some there were supposed to be DMC numbers on the back and they are coming off so I'm gonna have to take a look at this in a minute but um there's DMC's here and there's some DMC's in these floss away bags and then I have a um just a Victorian motto that I'm using out of stash because I like to work out of stash when I can, especially for something like this. I think we started this as a stitch along. Um, I can't remember what the purpose was, but I do remember we, we wanted to do Barbara Anna's. And so I decided to start this one. Um, I, don't know about this fabric. This is a very stiff um, linen, like a burlap sack style, which I know is really fun. 
um, for some projects and I think it works, but I am second guessing, uh, this because it's lost. That is completely lost. Now in person, it looks really cool because it's very like 3D. Um, I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but like there's a very clear like 3D effect. It just, just does not take well on the um, on the camera. But that's as far as I got on that project. I think that was one day's work, sadly. But that happens sometimes. It does. We're getting very close now to the end. And I've got lots of other things to talk to you about after we finish talking about whips. So next up is one of my favorite pieces, which I have focused a lot on this year, which is Gaia the Earth Goddess. It is in a monkey and mouse bag, project bag with my beautiful merman all over it. Love this bag. I do find that floppy bags are hard for cross stitch. Um, I, I would love to, to have a more sturdy bag or maybe put an insert in here maybe. But this is Gaia. That is what she will look like when she is finished. When I started this project, I started at the waist. I am stitching her on 32 count marbled bunny by XJU Designs. How do I even start? <laughs> this is like, this is like a tablecloth. Look, look, look how big this fabric is. So, There we go. There is my progress so far. I am completed with one page of the pattern. That is one page. She's so pretty. She's so pretty. I love it so much. I love that there's so much going on. There's a lot of like, here we've got Krynik these flowers here. There's going to be lots of beads in there as well. Um, the back stitching is minimal but impactful. Uh, Bella Filipina, just just by doing this one pattern alone, I have already fallen in love with this this pattern designer. I love stitching it um, because it is long blocks of color, which I enjoy. So I can see why the like fancy ladies are so addictive because these long lines of color in the body, in the, you know, the clothing that they're wearing and stuff like that. It's so soothing to stitch. So nice. I have had very minimal problems with this. I think I had one, one little problem somewhere up here or something in the greens that I, I've managed to fix or fudge. Um, and it honestly, it's, it's been a joy. So I have not picked this back up uh, for a little while, but I do love it. And I love the colors in it. It makes me very happy to stitch on. So that is that one. I started that on September 1st last year. The idea was that I was going to stitch it alongside the Dark Queen of the Earth Sal by autumn lane stitchery since I already had this one in my stash and kitted up I just wanted to be a bit frugal um, but I did not keep up with the sal it, it just didn't work out lots of things happen in my personal life so I wasn't able to keep up with it in that way but I love it I love this piece so much this one it's an ever tote bag so pretty. I actually bought this bag as a kit with the Park Hopper Bart Black Cats and Spooky Bats 
um, chart and floss, Roxy Floss Co. Uh, but I, I did not start that right away. I wanted to start this one instead. And um, this is one of my all-time favorite charts. This is a Lindy Stitches Dracula's Confession. Wow, sunshine. Sunshine decided to come out. Dracula's Confession. I'm not sure when I started this. I want to say that I probably started this on October the 1st last year. Um, this is a 32 count gilded by Mystic Fabrics. And it is about 60% complete. We have some leaves and then we have more words and more border. For this project, I am doing a little bit of floss conversion. So <clears throat> instead of Weeks Dye Works Bark, I'm using Valdani. Aged Black. And I think there was, was there something else? Oh, and then I'm using a dinky, nope, that's right. Dinky dies is included. Anyway, um, I went ahead and changed the bark to Valdani just because I could, <laughs> just to make it that much more fun. Um, and that is where I am with this uh, right here, this outline of the leaf that's happening. It's you're not going to be able to tell, I don't think, but it's much thicker than the other uh, the other flosses. It stands up off of the fabric a lot and it gives it a lot of dimension. So it's pretty cool. But just be warned if you're using Valdani's, you don't separate the 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 fibers. So it is much thicker just so that you're forewarned. But it is a gorgeous piece and I almost did start working on this again um, recently, but then for Dark 13 Stitching, which is Cozy Egg's baby, um, Cozy Egg over on Instagram, but I, and also here on, on YouTube, but I decided to continue working on another project, which is a finish, which I need to show you here in just a few minutes. I can't believe I got them all mixed up and uh, didn't show you my finishes first because I did finish some things. Okay, next up. <clears throat> On December the 2nd, 2022, I started Ever Totes and Modern Folk Embroideries Holiday Countdown Sal. I'm keeping it in this beautiful bag by Garon Toten Bags, GaronStitchery.com. They're based in Florida. Look at this bag. I love this fabric so much. When I saw this, I knew I had to have it. Look at the inside. Oh my God. It's like Monet. Amazing. So last year, I, I did not, I could not uh, get the box from, um, from Evertote. I, I just, I could not, with all of the changes made to shipping and everything, I wasn't able to buy the full box. So I went ahead and I just got the chart. Now this year they've decided that they're not going to be doing a booklet like this. Um, so I'm just going to carry on with this project and finish it this year instead of buying the new one. Um, but it, it, it will be available for PDF in January uh, from Modern Folk Embroidery if you want to join in on this year's Stitch Along, but you can't get the box if you're in a similar situation as me. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. You should go buy the box if you can, if you're in Canada or the States or something where it's closer and easier. <laughs> um, but anyway, 2022 Holiday Countdown Sal Frisian Band Sampler. The box provided you with 
the floss, all of the flosses, and there was, there was like 25 or 26 flosses and fabric and the, you know, little individually wrapped daily uh, bits of the pattern and another sampler afterwards. Just incredible. However, because I could not do that, um, I decided to reach in my stash and see what I had. And at that time, I had this in my stash. This is a hank of Silks For You silk, 100% uh, silk, and it is a heavily variegated silk. And I was like, what am I going to do? <laughs> what do I want to do with this? I went ahead and I started. This is a 16 count Ada called April Showers by Bee Stitch Me. And I fussy cut my fancy floss to work with this. The inside of the borders are not fussy cut, but some elements are like the birds, the hearts, these little flowers at the very, very top. They're all the same. Uh, and yeah, that's how far I was able to get. I, I did keep up with this for the most part until I think about two weeks in, then I had to put it down and attend to personal matters, but it is so pretty. This little needle minder is part of a, um, an advent calendar that I got from Hobby Wishes on Etsy. They're a European shop and they do these beautiful polymer clay minders. So beautiful. I got the, the like bee themed advent calendar. Um, worth it. So worth it. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Um, and they had like gnomes and everything. It was just so cute. But yes, the Frisian band sampler. I will be continuing to work on this closer to the holiday season. Might pick it up in, in November or something. And maybe I can finish it before Christmas this year. Who knows? <laughs> now, there are a couple on my list that I don't have dates for that I haven't included and I've just noticed that I haven't been I haven't included them yet so before we get to the last one I'm going to share with you two more it's just two more right because it's not in my chart I am a disorganized person so don't don't worry about me <clears throat> This is Beautiful Secrets by Heaven and Earth Designs. I can't believe this isn't in my chart. Where does it go? Anyway, this is by Adele Sessler, and it is a gorgeous kitsune. This piece I did work on during... Where is it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm staring at it all the way over here. This piece I took out for the 24 hours of cross stitch weekend that happened a couple weeks ago. And I managed to get quite a lot of stitching into it. This is stitched on 20 count Ada, opalescent Ada called Malibu by Bee Stitch Me. And I know, I know it's messy. I know it's messy but bear with me. I started in the middle of the pattern and I wanted to work on her face. So this is her mouth and the bottom of her nose and her chin, her neck. This is her hair. And this is like her, f her finger, like her, ha her hands like this. See how her hand is like behind her ear there. That's her thumb right there. So I am here <laughs> on this piece. Um, I started this, I was going to stitch this together with Michelle Bendy Stitchy, but she decided not to do it, which is fine because it's a hade. And they are big. 
Um, and this one is going to be huge. Like this is going to be a massive wall tapestry style. I mean, she is, her face is only a little, like a child's face. Okay. She'll be a child on my wall, <laughs> but, um, I am stitching this one over one full cross. Uh, whereas my soul of the rose heaven and earth design is two over two half stitch or 10 stitch. So this is, has a little bit more coverage. Well, no, they're, they're about the same coverage, but it's different. Um, it's so much easier to see the holes on Ada. So I am really enjoying working on this. It's easier to count and everything. And yeah, um, I, I, I just, I really like it. This is the no background version of the artwork. So what's going to happen is there are parts of this, which is kind of like an Art Nouveau style around the circle here in the background, um, around the edges as well. It's going to pop off the fabric. So it's not a full coverage, but it's mostly fully stitched. Does that make sense? Except for, you know, there are edges that are not stitched and it's stunning. And I tried to pick a fabric that looked as close to this picture as I possibly could. It's a little bit more pink and a little less peach, or maybe it's more pink and less brown but it's the closest that I could find and it is gorgeous. It's stunning. I really like this piece. Um, it has what 85 colors to it and it's going to take a lifetime. I don't even have like my DMCs are still fully, you know, hanked up. They're not, they're not, Put into bags or anything um, and I've decided sorry I'm not being very concise this morning but um, I decided to uh, go ahead and just work cross-country on this not extreme cross-country the difference is that with cross-country you're just kind of like taking a color and running with it right along a page or or whatever um, extreme cross country is where you take that one color and you do it all over the fabric everywhere that there is 310 that lives on the pattern. You do all of the 310 first, then you move on to the next color. I'm, I, I don't have the patience for that. Um, I want to see her face come together before I move on to other elements of the piece. So that's why I'm kind of sticking up in this region, getting this done as much as possible. And then I will move on with other elements. But unlike the Soul of the Rose, where I'm doing one page at a time, and I'm kind of going from top to bottom, and I'm parking the threads. I'm not really parking the threads. I am parking some, but I'm not really stopping at a specific point at a specific column or a specific page and saying I'm not doing anything beyond this point I will go as far as I can and then I'll park and come back to it later so that is beautiful secrets which I did a lot of work on. I think I got 2,000 stitches or 3,000 stitches on that piece and then we have this one, which is beautiful. This is an 805 stitcher bag. I love this bag so much. It makes me so happy. It's got these super fluffy kittens and pumpkins. This is another witchy stitcher. And this I started, I believe, in November last year <clears throat> when I went to Tenerife on holiday and I wanted to take something with me. This is my little vacation piece that uh, I took in tandem with Stiach and uh, it's called Ghost Stories. It's so cute. So cute. The linen that I have was in a box and this was kitted. 
So it's got all the, the flosses kitted up and I use the floss cards. I think I made these floss cards, but I went ahead and made Halloween ones. Um, the, f the fabric itself came in a box from either Bee Stitch Me or Black Needle Society because I did get both boxes and I have a very meager start on this one, but it is beautiful. It is beautiful. And, uh, this is a, I have it right here, 28 count linen. It looks really close to the called for fabric, but a little less orange. So it's not the Fortnite Fright Night. I think it's Be Stitch Me something. Ooh, it's hard to say, but it's a beautiful murky kind of fabric and I love it. It's so pretty. So cool. I love Halloween stitching. Can you tell? <laughs> So that is in the gorgeous 805 stitcher bag. And then I have one more, one more, no, two more whips. Two more whips to show you that I have on the list. I'll have to figure out where these go. Again, if anybody's watching this and you know where it belongs on the timeline, please let me know. I would, I would love to, to hear it. The other stuff in there is embroidery, so I'm not going to go into that because I haven't touched embroidery in a long time, and I don't know if I will go back to that anytime soon. But, okay, are we ready? Hi, honey. Hi, Luna. This one is in a Betty Home Decor bag. Hi. Betty Home Decor bag. She is in the UK. That cute little bag, huh? That adorable. These are nice and soft. They're not quilted, but they're close. And for this project, this came in the February box called the Bird Burb box. Excuse me. Coffee. One of my best friends on this planet is Jesse at misslaidpages.com. Okay. So I talk about them all the time and I do gush because I'm really, really proud. My friend Jesse made a cross stitch box, a themed box, and came out with it earlier this year. It's called the February Burb Box. I'm going to make an, a special announcement a little bit later in this video. So you're going to want to make sure that you stick around. But in this box, which is hiding in the cubby over there, I have an unboxing on my channel if you want to check it out. One of the patterns in there was another bendy pattern called Pocketbook Peacocks. This is on a piece of fabric that Jesse dyed called Awakening. It's a 32 count linen and it's incredible. Look at the color. Like, oh, Jesse's style is ice dyeing. And so each piece while similar is unique. So this is my first peacock. And there's going to be some flowers and another one on the other side. But this is how far I've gotten. And this was like a really good car piece. I, I was working on this in the car while I was waiting for appointments and stuff like that to be done. I have all the bits and bobs up from the box as well. Um, using dinky dyes on floss drops that were made for the Burt box, February Berry. Thread jewelry, everything. Oh, it's so soft, so beautiful. The cool thing about this box is that not only we got three patterns using the same colorways, able to use the, 
the silks for all of the projects in the box, um, or at least most of them without having to buy more. Um, just a really cool idea that, you know, they're all connected. They have different base colors, the fabric colors, but the floss colors are all the same. And I'm just super proud of them. It was a, it was an idea that turned into something beautiful and something that we could share with each other. I'm just super happy for for them and and for us because now we have all these beautiful things. So that is where I am on pocketbook peacocks. And my last new start slash whip is in another Love You More bag. This is covered in dog hair, but um, it's a nice crane, Japan, of course. This is a bit messy, and I don't know what that's doing in there. This I started. Oop. <laughs> Thing jumping out at me. I started this piece because a designer that we know is another designer that we know is also suffering from a cancer diagnosis. Night Spirit Studio, who is Sage. My needle was buried in the fabric. Sorry, I needed to fix that. So Sage has been going through it and we decided in June, end of June, to start a stitch stitch along called Stitch for Sage. And I had a look. I've purchased a few charts from Night Spirit Studio, but I specifically wanted something new. Like I wanted to support by buying something and I wanted something small. So I chose a pattern called Ego Death. And look at this fabric. 32 count elixir by XJU Designs. You can purchase this from a couple of places other than directly from them. Um, but this like, what is the, there's a, there's a fabric by Kitten Stitcher called Grandpa's Sleeve. And I can't unsee that like anytime I see these splotchy kind of fabrics like this it just looks like a mechanic coming home from work and you're stitching on their sleeve it's amazing anyway ego death night spirit studio started 30th of June of this year the Minder here, this turtle is also a Hobby Wishes minder. Needle minder. And it's beautiful. Um, I have a lot to go. I'm using a, um, a silk from Stash and just doing it monotone, you know, just like one color all the way. Um, I really hope that I can work on this a little bit closer because it it's so small that it would be very easy to finish um but yeah we've we've got a lot of stitch alongs going on at the moment because of health issues and things like that so just something i'll have to keep in mind and and just try to keep up <laughs> that's that's all we can do right i love the inside of this bag as well amazing okay so that's it for whips finishes as promised i finished and i showed this off i think yeah i, I showed this one off last time in my 24 hours of cross stitch recap i'm not sure if you've seen it or not but I did manage to finish Bendy Stitchy Trimming the Tree. It's so cute. It's adorable. Now the lighting. The sun is fighting with me. 
This is on a, uh, I think it's a 32 count called Sunlit Water by Crafty Kitten, one of those ornament cuts. And you can kind of see how there's like splotches of white in the background. It's very pretty. I like that. But it's all done. And now I need to fully finish it. Fully finishing takes me a while. I'll be honest. Take that needle binder off. Um, but I was thinking about either a really small frame or putting it in the journal. I'm not sure if it'll fit in the journal, but we'll see. And then here is the, my, I'm so proud of this. Um, I did focus on Savor Life. This is the project bag that came with the box. This is from the Night Garden box that they did a couple years ago. This is the pattern, Savor Life and All Its Magic. My camera does not want to focus, but it's got this beautiful moth and ivy and everything. Using all of the called for colors that came in the box and the called for fabric, which is a 36 count Picture this plus in French lilac. I'm so nervous to see how this is gonna come up on camera. It looks different in every single light. <gasps> that is it. Oh my gosh, that's actually the color. Okay, so, ah, it's the color. Wow. Oh, did you see how it changed again? It's a little darker than that. Okay, well, you saw it for a second. Um, this color is very hard to film. It's very hard to photograph but it is gorgeous in person. Um, it's, I'm just so, I'm so happy with the finish of this. This is one over two on 36 count and the, the combination of the really, really dark fabric and the small holes and linen and everything made this a very challenging piece for me. And, um, I learned a lot and I learned that I love one over two on 36 count, just maybe not this dark, <laughs> but oh, the color is so beautiful. I love the moth. The moth is beautiful. Um, and I'd love to stitch it again as like a badge or something, but oh, I gotta stand up. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the couching that I did on the back stitch for the moons, but I did pin down the back stitch a little bit. So yeah. That's Savor Life all complete. So happy about that. Honestly, and it needs to be framed. This is definitely gonna go in a picture frame. Uh, it did come with this finishing kit. It has like Lady Dot Creates. Um, it's got push pins. It's got Chanel kind of trim and fabric to make a bag but I will not be using it um, I'm gonna gift it I'm gonna send I'm gonna send all of the accoutrement and the pattern to my friend Jasmine so that they can stitch it um, it was it was a labor of love but I'm so glad that I pushed through and I finished so yes fun stuff. All right, I'm going to get this stuff put away and then I will come back to you for plans and the special stuff that I want to share with you here at the end. All right, are you ready for the chit chatty portion of this video? <laughs> 
So right now I'm going to interrupt because it has been like over an hour for sure, um, probably an hour and a half at this stage. Um, I would like to tell you about the giveaway that I'm going to be doing for this video. Now the giveaway is only going to be open from the time that this is posted until my next upload. So that could be a week, it could be a month. I really don't know what life has in store, but as long as this is open uh, and I haven't made another video, you're welcome to enter this little giveaway. As I was saying before, my friend Jessie is mislaid pages and you can see whoop, mislaid pages Patreon here. Uh, you can join their Patreon right now and you can jump in before September the 1st to purchase a February Burb box. The February 2024 Burb box. Just like this year, Jesse's making another box for next February and it's amazing. There are two types of boxes. There is a hatchling box and a fully fledged box. They are two different price points, uh, but I'm going to tell you what the difference is because it will be available in on September the 1st for the public to purchase. I've already purchased mine because I'm a patron, but um, I'm going to be giving away a hatchling box in this video. So the difference i will i will uh give you the details here you can pause to read if you like but a burb is a uh, internet slang word for referring to birds like as cute things and the idea is that it's a limited edition mystery box that has cross stitch components in it so inside the fully fledged box if we keep going down it says that there are six new exclusive printed charts from six different designers incredible we've got bendy stitchy d's 20 and carrie nuckin darling and whimsy designs marumi designs jesse mislaid pages and peruvian flare amazing. In the fully fledged, the big box, you get two pieces of hand dyed fabric that are a quarter of a yard each and exclusive colorways just for the box. And you get your choice of fabric count. You also get five skeins of dinky dyes and that go along with the patterns in the in the box and all kinds of cross stitch themed goodies. And if you go back and you look at the fully fledged box that I purchased uh, last year for this year, you'll see just how much care and attention goes into these boxes. But for this particular video, and what I am going to be giving away is the hatchling box, which is a box that has all six of those patterns, a full set of the DMC equivalent to the dinky dies chosen for that box, which is going to be eight skeins of DMC and all of those stitchy goodies, but it won't have the fabrics. So if you are, let's just say you are on a budget or maybe you cannot afford to get the box, but you really want to get in and you want to, to participate, um, please enter in. So what I would like you to do is please write the word burb in a comment down below, B-I-R-B. -B. In order to enter, you must be 18. You must know that this is not affiliated with anybody. I'm actually purchasing the box myself. <laughs> Jesse is gonna help me with the um, shipping, um, depending on where in the world you are. Uh, we'll, we'll figure that out, but it's covered by me and Jesse. Um, I will be using the happy mail form in order to find your details so that I can email you the winner uh, if you do win. So please make sure that you filled in my happy mail form, which is linked down below in the description box of this video. If you've already filled it in, 
this year since you started watching this channel when I created the channel, then you are you're good. You don't have to enter it again. But if you haven't and you would like to enter the giveaway, you must fill in the form so that I can contact you. And um, please do not use the word giveaway, prize, anything that will flag the trolls. Please do not do that. Um, I It will actually automatically discount your comment. Your comment gets flagged by YouTube and it goes poof. So please do not do that. The winner will be chosen by a random comment picker website that will help me to choose one person out of the hopefully many people who are going to enter. And then I will look up that person on the Happy Mail form and email you. My email address is rachelraycraft at gmail.com. So if you get any other unsolicited mail from any other web address, it's not me. I'm rachelraycraft at gmail.com. Um, I would highly recommend that if you would like to get in on this box that you join Jesse's Patreon, obviously, um, and purchase it now, or make sure that you set your alarm 10 a.m. Eastern time uh, on September the 1st is when these boxes will go live to the public so that you can purchase your fully fledged box or your hatchling box at that time and you won't miss out. They will be arriving, flying into your home early next year in time so that all of us can stitch together for February aviary, which I absolutely love. In February, we stitch all the birds um, or burbs. But I am, I love, love, love Jesse, and I love this box so much. And I want to give to you all who are dedicated viewers. Thank you so much. I hope that you'll enjoy this. Again, it's for the hatchling box. It will not have any fabric in it, but it will have all of those charts and it will be coming straight to your door uh, with the love and the care and the kindness of Jesse. And I'm just so happy to be able to do that. Yeah, you too. Luna says hi. So that is the little giveaway. Um, but please keep watching because I'm not done. I want to talk about plans. Um, I have a little thing that I do. It's called, and I'm going to, oh, not going to move myself. I'm going to move. Okay. I'm, I'm going to move myself, I guess. Here we go. <laughs> there. This is my whip go template. This is what I use to, to play WhipGo. And I talked about this earlier in the video. WhipGo is like a bingo um, for your cross stitch. And as you can see, <clears throat> all of the green are pieces that I have reached my goal. Somehow this year I have done really good with my WhipGo. Um, I want to thank myself. No, <laughs> um, I, I have been, because I've been focusing on specific projects for longer than like if I pick something up I try to work on it for like at least three to four days five days um, I'm trying for a week um, that I that I do hit my target of 500 stitches that's my goal for every every project that's on my board what I'm interested in doing I want to continue to keep up with my whip go. And as you can see, I have three purple boxes here. Um, something spooky, person, and long dog. So you can see those are the three that I need to complete in order to uh, have, you know, all of the boxes go green. And uh, so I am going to be continuing to work on my whip go. I'm, I'm actually really happy with myself that I've managed to get this far. Um, but we still have many more months of the year, four more months. And so we'll see what happens. But basically, if you're curious about WIPGO, you can go to Facebook. Um, I have a link to the WIPGO group down below in the description box you can check out. I changed my board. You can, you can get these templates on the Facebook group, but I changed my board around so that my numbers are different and my prompts are more open-ended. 
Some people put specific projects in their boards. I do prompts. That way I feel like I have a more of a wiggle room depending on when those blocks get called. I may not be feeling like a specific whip that's in my stash here. Uh, I might I might want something else, something more seasonal or something that I want to continue working on and then I can kind of wiggle it in there. Um, but of course there are no hard and fast rules to whip go. You just do what you want really. But um, that is something that I will be focusing on, continue to focus on. And um, I have ideas like something spooky. I would like to work on my cryptids uh, person. It could be the Heaven and Earth Designs, the Beautiful Secrets, or it could be Gaia, or it could be um, the mermaids that I'm about to start. I'm about to tell you about that. Uh, and then my long dog, the new normal, is something that I would love to get back to as well. Um, Speaking of the mermaids, um, I don't know if you've heard of this, but this is the Fiberlicious and Bella Filipina Mermaids of the Seasons Stitch Along. You can get this from FiberliciousYummyFibers.com. At the very top, if you click up here, Mermaid of the Season Sal, you can order the PDF by clicking in, but this is what the project is going to look like. Isn't it amazing? Now Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers has dyed a specific fabric for the sal if you want to get it, but for me, I have decided not to do that because again, I'm working from stash, I'm trying to uh, save some money, etc but you can get the pdf and i've ordered all of the flosses the crinics the beads everything for the sal and i wanted to show you the fabric that i'm going to be using it starts on september the 15th and here's my fabric i think it's really pretty it reminds me of the the picture that i just showed you kind of concept art. I think it'll work really well. This is called It's a Mystery by Bee Stitch Me and it's a 28 count linen. I found this in my stash and I thought, you know what, this is going to look really pretty. The sal is, because um, the story is that they wanted to do four mermaids, uh, one for each season. On a piece of fabric and honestly like you know how I feel about Bella Filipina we just talked about it um, I'm gonna be starting that and each drop is going to happen on the 15th of the month so September 15th October 15th November 15th and December 15th we'll have the four parts the four mermaids and I'm just so happy I think it's gonna be very doable as well they're they're not as big as like Gaia is. So I'm going to participate in that. I have plans to do that. And um, if you are interested, definitely check out Yummy Licious or Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. I don't know why I always get tongue tied on that one. Right, Luna? Now, this month, what's left of this month, as of this moment, it is now August the 19th. Um, it's uh, arbitrary August in my floss tube circles and it's kind of like where you just pick random things that you want to work on uh, you know during the month of August but like I was saying I'm kind of focused on whip go kind of focused on witchy stitcher um, and night spirit studio um, Although I really like the concept of SWIWI, which stands for Stitch What You Want When You Want. I have undiagnosed ADHD or ADD, and I like to change, like I, I get a lot of feel good chemicals in my brain when I do something new and exciting and I switch it up all the time. Um, so I have to kind of rein it in a little bit and not get 
too far ahead of myself with things that I want to start and do. So I'm going to say no more new starts for this month. The next new start will be for the mermaid st mermaids of the season stitch along. Um, but like I said, uh, I've got I've got plenty of projects to be working on, and uh, we'll we'll see what happens. But again, I'm kind of focused on knitting. I'm focused on this and that and the other, and I'm just trying to have a good time with the rest of the summer that we have, and um, and also with my health, which I will get to here in a minute. Um, alongside the mermaid sal, I was saying it earlier. I'm going to be um, stitching or trying to focus quite a bit on Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. Um, it is a very large chart and so I anticipate that between September and November I'm going to be focusing really hard between that and the mermaid stitch along. So we'll see lots of lots of progress on those hopefully in the next couple months. Let's see what happens. Um, and also, I just wanted to put it out there that the next 24 Hours of Cross Stitch weekend that is being hosted by Jen Lee, aka Quirks and Stitches, and her mom, uh, is going to be happening October 20th to 23rd. So if you want to prepare yourself for the 24 hours, the next 24 hours of cross stitch weekend, put it in your calendar now, October 20th. Um, I will be doing it again. I don't know if I'm going to make a video or if I'm, I might go live on Twitch actually and try to get um, two 12 hour streams back to back or maybe, um, you know, break it up somehow over the weekend so that we can hang out and do 24 hours of cross stitch. I think that would be really fun. Uh, so maybe you'll join me over there. I'm twitch.tv slash slash Rachel Ray craft, just like my main channel. All right. So that is all of the like news updates, plans, etc. I hope that you're still with me. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so something that has happened in the last couple of months is that uh, I got acute bronchitis and I've kind of been struggling with uh, my health. So I haven't been crafting as much as I used to. And uh, it honestly, it started to make me feel some kind of way. But I also realized that like, Sometimes we just need to take care of ourselves and, you know, sometimes these, these things, all of this, uh, it means nothing if I'm not healthy. So, um, I have kind of, even though I wanted to be there and I wanted to keep making updates, um, I was not well enough to, but I am okay. I will be okay. I am currently in the process of determining whether I'm going to be going back to the States for two weeks in a kind of trip back to my family home. Uh, my, my grandmother, who uh, was very important, very, a, a mother figure in my life, passed away on New Year's Eve of last year. And um, very suddenly. And I was, I was there taking care of her with my dad and um, his now wife. And unfortunately, you know, I also had the, the passing of my mother-in-law this year in May. So we've, this is the, what I'm trying to say is that I'm, I'm going to be going back to Virginia to go through her things, to, um, you know, get memorabilia and uh, my childhood things as well and bring them over to Ireland um, because this is where I am. And so I will be gone at some point. Um, currently, we're looking at the end of September, early October. So I will be gone for two weeks at some point. Um, depending on my health and whatnot, it might be September, it might be October or November looks like it'll be in the fall that I'll be going away. So if I am not as active, um, that is why, uh, it's always, 
at this time and the last few times that I've gone back to Virginia, it's been very bittersweet, but I hope that, I hope that it'll be a good trip. Um, another thing, something that I'm looking forward to is that in, uh, April of next year, I am going to Stitch North in Toronto and I am so excited. I booked my tickets, my plane tickets finally. Um, I've got the hotel lined up, bringing my husband. It's going to be a great time. We're planning on going to Toronto to the Stitch uh, weekend and then going back down and visiting family again. So it's something to look forward to. I'm very excited about it. Uh, but there is there in between all of this is the winter Christmas period. And that always kind of makes me a bit sad these days. So I'm going to just surround myself with loved ones and cross stitch and knitting and hopefully we'll get through it together. I'm sure that if you've been through it, you you know what I mean. Um, but for this particular year, it's going to be it's been it's been a rough few years but anyway anyway uh we will get through it together it's been a wild ride and i do appreciate that you all are so kind and supportive and uh you understand how it can just yeah luna's getting upset because i'm getting upset but anyway what I'm trying to say is thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Um, your comments. I love your comments. Thank you all so much. Hi. Thank you so much for all of your kind words and support. We appreciate it. And now we're going to go and edit this video. <laughs> this monster of a video. Thanks for watching. I hope that you all take care and stay safe. Don't forget all the things down below, right? And I will see you as soon as I can in my next Floss Tube update. Take care, everyone. Bye.